Hello there. My name is Armin Kilmer. And my name is Arthur Schmidt. We are both gastroenterologists at the Center for Interventional Endoscopy in the Department of Gastroenterology and Hepatology, University of Freiburg. On behalf of our co-authors, we would like to present our manuscript Endoscopic Full Thickness Resection for Early Colorectal Cancer, which will be published soon in GI Endoscopy. We would like to thank GI Endoscopy for the opportunity to present our study here and we would also like to thank our co-authors and the participating centers for contributing to the study. Current international guidelines recommend endoscopic resection for early colorectal cancer for those with low risk features and surgical treatment for those with high risk features. Endoscopic full thickness resection has been shown to be effective in non-malignant lesions, but there is a lack of data in malignant ones. In our multicenter retrospective study, we aim to evaluate efficacy, safety and clinical value of EFTR in early colorectal cancer. For our study, we screened medical records of 1,234 patients who had undergone endoscopic full thickness resection with TFTRG system for various indications at 96 European centers. We were able to identify 156 patients with histological evidence of adenocarcinoma in the resection specimen. This cohort comprised 64 cases who had undergone EFTR after incomplete resection of a malignant polyp, those were defined as group 1, as opposed to 92 non, not previously treated non-lifting lesions, those were defined as group 2. Endpoints of the study were technical success, zero resection, adverse events and successful histological discrimination of high-risk versus low-risk tumors. The main results of our study are as follows. Technical success, defined as reaching the lesion, successful clip application and macroscopic complete resection of the lesion was achieved in 92.3%. Mean procedural time was 42 minutes. Overall, our zero resection rate was achieved in 71.8%. Subgroup analysis showed an R0 resection rate of 87.5% in group 1 and 60.9% in group 2. This difference was statistically significant. Severe procedure related adverse events, mainly perforations, were recorded in 3.9%. Discrimination between high-risk versus low-risk tumor was successful in 99.3%. 84.1% of group 1 were identified as low-risk lesions and 16.3% in group 2 were identified as low-risk lesions. In total, 53 patients underwent oncological resection due to high-risk features, whereas 98 patients were followed endoscopically. In summary, the results of the study indicate that endoscopic full thickness resection for early colorectal malignant lesions is effective and safe. However, what is the clinical significance of this study? So as mentioned, correct discrimination between high-risk and low-risk lesions is crucial to assign patients to the correct treatment strategy, endoscopic therapy versus surgical oncologic resection. However, pre-therapeutic discrimination between high-risk and low-risk tumors is usually not possible as this requires complete histological workup of the tumor to evaluate criteria like submucosal infiltration depth or infiltration of lymphatic vessels. In our study, we were able to successfully discriminate between high-risk versus low-risk lesions in 99.4% of patients. 
This, in our view, emphasizes the role of endoscopic full thickness resection as a diagnostic tool for tissue acquisition in early colorectal cancer. Now let's have a quick look at the subgroup analysis of our study. Our study cohort comprised 64 patients who had undergone incomplete resection of an incidentally found malignant polyp. Those patients are often referred to surgery as endoscopic retreatment is difficult or impossible due to scarring. After EFTR, 84.1% of the patients were finally classified as low risk and therefore correctly identified not to be candidates for surgical treatment. In other words, EFTR obviated the need for surgery in those patients. The second subgroup of our study included 92 patients with non-lifting lesions which had not been treated endoscopically before. So to our surprise, in the vast majority of these lesions, histological evaluation of the FTRD specimen re revealed a high-risk situation. So those patients were recommended to undergo surgical oncological resection. So why is a primary endoscopic full thickness approach still uh, justifiable? This is the case for mainly two reasons. So keep in mind that we screened a large cohort of 1,234 patients, most of them being non-lifting lesions. And of those, only a, minor a, min a minority, meaning 156 patients, had malignant histology. So from the total cohort, um, only a small percentage, 12.6%, had malignant histology. And high-risk lesions were found only in 7% of cases. So the high-risk patients only comprised a sm very small subgroup of patients from the total cohort and surgery, surgery was not required in the vast majority of patients. Second, there has been a recent study by Overwater and colleagues showing that endoscopic treatment of high-risk lesions before surgical oncologic resection does not affect long-term oncologic outcome. So therefore, EFTR may primarily be considered as a diagnostic tool for tissue acquisition in um, previously untreated non-lifting lesions suspicious for early colorectal cancer. So in conclusion, our study shows that EFTR in early colorectal cancer is feasible, effective and safe. It allows exact histological risk stratification and therefore avoids surgery for those patients with low risk lesions. For those patients with high risk lesions who are unfit for surgery, it might as well be a valuable option for local endoscopic treatment. However, prospective studies are required to further define indications for EFTR in malignant lesions and to evaluate long-term outcome of patients. So I really hope that you uh, enjoy reading the study. Uh, please do not hesitate to contact us at any time if you have questions. We would like to again say a big thank you to all our collaborators and especially to Julius Müller, who is my doctoral fellow and who has um, made great efforts in screening patients and in